Hey, welcome everybody. Brother Goodwin here, Prostate Spotlight. Hey, I got uh, our guest with us again this week, uh, Dr. William P. Grady. Uh, we've been talking about his book, Perilous Time. Hey, how many out there think we're in perilous times? Uh, if you don't think so, you're not paying attention. You do, you're, you're living in la-la land somewhere. Uh, we are in perilous times. And, and, and I say this too, you ain't seen nothing yet. Bad stuff is on the horizon. You better be prepared for it. The Bible says the prudent man seeth the evil afar off and hideth himself. There's a lot of truth in there. And uh, all right, we're going to get right to it here. Brother Grady's sitting right there. He's anxious to uh, share some more truth, some more nuggets from this, this book here. We want you to know that you can get the book on the website, ProstantSpotlight.com. You can get one or you can buy two, get a real good deal on two of them. And uh, that way you can give one to a friend or your pastor. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, roll up your sleeves, get your pen and pencil out, and uh, stay tuned. Hey, everybody, glad to have you with us today on this exciting program uh, with Brother, Brother Bill Grady, my, my ex, my old college professor from Bible college days back in the 80s. Oh, my goodness, what some times we had. And uh, who would have ever thought, Brother Grady, looking back, you know, going back in time, who would have ever thought that we'd be doing, we'd be on television for one thing. My goodness. Uh, who would have ever thought that I'd ever written anything? And did you ever thought when you was in Bible college mm -hmm. that you'd write something? And no. that first book you wrote was a huge, a huge hardback thing. I don't, I don't know how you. Leaders are readers, and writers are leaders of leaders. And writers are. Uh, remember, Doc Evans always said the world is run by tired men. And uh, I never forgot that. It was a lot of truth. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I don't know what it's like for other authors, but I'm telling when I'm when, I'm in, when I just finished a book, um, it's at the printer right now as I speak. Um, of course, this this is going to air several weeks later, but um, it's the book, the Prosy Puzzle, right there. She'll put it up for you. Um, I mean, I'm in another world. I mean, my mind is saturated. It's uh, I don't know how people live with me, but. Um, it's all about the book. Should we start talking to your wife about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she can tell you. And of course, it affects her too. She has a lot of parts to, in, to play in the book and the getting it ready. But uh, uh, folks, the the Prosy Puzzle, the most I think the most important book that I have written is is on the website now, and you can get it there. And uh, all right, well, Brother Grady, let's uh, let's continue on with with your book. And uh, we want to let the audience know how much we appreciate them watching every week. And those of you who support us and uh, we partner with us, send us money and keep us on the air. Uh, Doc and I, uh, Dr. Hiltabill and I get no salary here. We get no, no money. All the money that comes in pays for the television airtime. Very, very expensive. And uh, we appreciate everybody out there that's involved in that. <coughs> All right, Brother Grady, um, the book is in three parts. We talked about that, I think. Uh, the first part is current events, what's going on in the world, what's going on in America, bad, bad stuff. The second part is how, why God raised up America and how he did it and all that. And I think we've talked about that. The third part is equally as important, maybe more so. Now that we know what's coming, how, how do we survive this? So we're going to get to that. But I want to ask you a couple questions before we get to that, just because I've been wanting to ask these for three weeks now of our programs, and we just haven't got to it. I want to get your thoughts on a couple things, and I know you do write about Ukraine in the book. Um, I want to get your thoughts on what's going on in Ukraine with this crazy war going on there. You know, it just uh, so happens that I... Uh had a picture of my uh, father when he was six years old here, but with his mother and father, Grady, the Irishman. But there's my grandmother, Mary Kroll. She was German, but she was born in the Ukraine. Really? She's German-born, you know, Ukraine, Ukrainian-born German woman. It doesn't mean I know anything about the Ukraine, but I've been to the Ukraine. Matter of fact, I got held up at the border. 
I was in Russia and went into the Ukraine. I tried to get back to Russia, and they wouldn't let me out until we paid a few rubles. <laughs> but that's another story. Corruption. Ukraine's one of the most corrupt countries in it the is. world, just like Mexico. And I think I, I keep hearing it's the fourth most, cr most corrupt nation in the world. Russia is like number seven or eight. They're worse than Russia. They really are. And I, I, I have an insight to what you believe, which is mean you and I are almost up, just about on the same page. But 99% of this country is in the dark. There's an American colonel named David McGregor. Yeah. And he is, uh, he is so well versed on yeah. that situation. You listen to him for a couple of days, you feel like you've been to college. And I've gotten a lot of my insights from him. Yeah. He's not a saved man, I don't believe, and he's much more hard on Israel than I, I sense Israel's, you know, um, negative stuff. So you don't be shocked about that. But several things I learned from him. Uh, number one, uh, the current Russia is not the former Soviet Union. Uh, Putin is not Stalin or Khrushchev. You know, Putin wants a, a viable economy. He wants to be a part of what's going on. He does not want to conquer the Ukraine, the whole country. He doesn't want to mess with NATO countries or anything. All of that is 24-hour spin from the American media, yeah. including Fox News. So much of it boils down to just one concept. And again, these are things I think you know. But for the sake of your readers, if you pay any attention to the news, you're never going to get this straight. The number one problem with that whole war is that NATO wants to make Ukraine part of NATO. That's the Cuban Missile Crisis exactly right. from the Soviet uh, or Russian perspective. We don't want to, the whole Iron Curtain after World War II, even under our, under the uh, despotic so you know USSR. The idea of the Iron Curtain was a buffer between Russia and West. I mean, Napoleon attacked Russia, Hitler attacked Russia. That's their that's the history. They want a buffer. We all want that. We have the Atlantic Ocean as our buffer. And NATO, and again, I don't know everything. I don't want to talk like an expert, but the basics anybody can learn. When NATO was formed in 1945, it was a defensive alliance. It was meant to keep Soviet tanks from coming into Western Europe. So they aligned all those European powers for a defensive buffer. Well, the Soviet Union collapsed. It's no longer here. Russia is not the Soviet Union. And it was formed as a defensive alliance. That was the whole philosophy of its inception. But now it's been moving eastward. It's expanding, and it's becoming aggressive. Finland and Sweden were just taken in the Baltic countries before that. And these are getting closer and closer to Russian territory. That means if they're NATO countries, they have missiles pointed at Russia that are closer than they were back yonder here. It's very basic. And Ukraine is the key nation. And if, NATO, if Ukraine becomes part of NATO, Putin's looking at missiles on his, on his border. Right, yeah. So from day one, the Minsk agreements was meant to keep uh, Ukraine neutral and, and the allies and the NATO powers reneged on the Minsk agreements. And, and, here, they, and again, I don't know everything. I've learned most of this from Colonel McGregor. His resume is about that big. Really, he, he's something yep. else. And I think you're well aware yep. of what he, who he is. But the whole thing goes back to 2014 when there was a democratically elected pro-Russian pr prime minister or president of the Ukraine, you know, the man that's holding Zelensky's, who Zelensky's holding that position today. He was pro-Russian. Well, the CIA threw him out with a coup d'etat big time. Yep. And they put a anti-Russian president in. And then at that point, the Ukrainian government and military began to oppress the eastern edge of the Ukrainian country, which are 99% Russian-speaking and Russian-minded people. And so what Putin did a year and a half ago was taking the first aggressive move after the Crimea was taken to, to answer all this uh, war that started in 2014. Nobody talks about it. But there was hundreds, a hundred thousand, couple hundred thousand Ukrainians killed that are pro-Russian Ukrainians. So Putin finally steps in. He sent only 80, 90,000 troops in. He wasn't sending a, an army to conquer the whole country. It was just to reoccupy and have those folks vote on whether they want to come under Russian sphere now. That's all it was, thinking America would, would uh, dip in and 
you know, signal a peace treaty and or get peace negotiations begun, which is the last thing they did. And so, uh, you know, w with that in mind, uh, I, I, I have a, uh, what, what, what is basically, had, what has basically been happening, and preacher, I know I'm singing to the choir talking to you, because I know you know these things, but for your listeners to get a second imp opinion that matches your opinion, they need to hear this stuff. What's going on basically now is Europe and the United States and Great Britain are fighting a proxy war against Russia. Yep. It's dangerous. Using the Ukrainians as the cannon fodder. They've had over a half a million dead. Yeah. I, we had 38,000 dead in World War II. They've got a half a million dead, a small country to begin with. It's Most of them 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. And now they're, they're, they're drafting, dragging people they're into the... Bringing women in now, I think. Yes, and we keep talking about we're going to resupply... Mar how come nobody's suing for peace? How come nobody's making an attempt? The president of Hungary is the only guy that's making some yeah. effort, along with Chin in China, in China. That's it. Biden and the rest of them, all they want to do is provoke Russia. They're, they're provoking, you know, the um, giving the uh, Ukrainians permission now to use American weapons to fire at Russian targets inside of Russia, not let the Ukrainians shoot Russians inside of the Ukraine. You know about this but to fire into Russia proper. Uh, like a couple weeks ago, they hit a uh, radar base that Russia uses to monitor incoming nukes. That's their security blanket. We wiped it out. Yeah. You know what that tells Putin? Maybe some nukes are coming. You talk about putting somebody on guard. Yeah. Uh, a drone attack landed, uh, I think it was, a, I don't know, a couple of meters from Putin's personal residence. So you know what he did? He turned around and had a hypersonic missile fired at a NATO meeting that was three miles from the Polish border. It wiped out 20, 30 NATO officers, killed them. I understand there was an American, at least, that was killed as well. Three miles from the Polish border to show them, don't mess with us, we're serious. Yeah. But having said all of that, what I think, and again, am I right, Brother Goodwin, the longer we're saved, the older we get, the less we want to be dogmatic. We don't know everything, yeah. but we know some things. What it seems to me is Biden, and he's got so many problems on his own overnight since the crazy debate, but it's been like he's been constantly provoking Putin, and Putin is holding off for Trump to get in. But, Putin want, but Biden and the West, they want to start a nuclear war. And Putin's trying to hang in there until the election. But the, but the neatest thing that the Lord showed me about all of this, I couldn't wait to tell this to you. The neatest thing is this, in my humble opinion, back to that image that um, Daniel saw, Golden Head, Babylon, Asia, Shem, Persia, Medes, Asian, Shem, but then the Europeans come in at the brass belly. That's the Greeks take over, followed by the two Roman legs, Western, Japhethite, right? Okay, well, here's the crazy thing. On the bottom of those two legs are two feet with ten toes. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's where the stone cut out without hand takes that image out, not at the legs, but at the feet. So here's the thing the Lord gave me, Dan. You'll love this. You got so much deep stuff going, I got to come up with something deep. <laughs> here's the craziest thing. You know who those ten toes are? This is something you're going to never forget this. Make a note. You heard this on this broadcast tonight. You know who those ten toes are that the Lord's going to take out? Those ten toes are NATO. Wow. NATO, the EU. And one more, they're the bad guys. Putin is, a, Putin is not Stalin. He's a, he's, a, he's, a good, he's a bad good guy, you might say. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, Russian, but here's the deal. Remember when he's button heads with Obama over the Olympics? He's not letting any sodomites in his Olympic team, and Obama's making fun of him. Putin is a nationalist. He wants what's good for Russia. He's not wanting to be part of the globalism. Mm -hmm. And the globalists can't stand that. And that's what this is all about, I think. But one more thought from the scripture, and then you know, I'll pass the baton back to you. One of the neatest things the Lord showed me recently again is that those, those, those two feet with the ten toes, you know what it says. It's not iron. It's iron no, mixed with clay, yep. and the clay does not stick to the iron. Right. It's there, 
but it won't merge. And the other day, I think, one application I got is Europe's number one problem is the same problem we're having here. Foreigners, immigrants all over Europe, yeah. you know that. I think that's the clay that's weakening the iron. Yeah. And the EU is shot, the economies are shot, and now they're resisting it. They're trying to get rid yeah. of them. See, they try to tell us that diversity is strength, but it's the opposite. It's diversity the opposite. weakens. And, the, and it's not fixing. It, it, and it's not. Yeah. Co yeah. And, but by this time, they're there. And their economy is collapsing as a result of it. So the devil's doing the same thing in Europe that he's done in America. Sooner or later, everybody, everybody's economy is going to create. Brexit isn't, pardon me, isn't going to be the answer. It's just a diversion, I think, at the moment. The Antichrist is going to have the answers. Yeah. He's about ready to show up, don't you think? Yeah, and he's going to institute the one world financial system, which is here now. It's just that we're still allowed to use our dollars. Yeah. But the world system is ready. And, it is. and we're already digital. Well, you know, you can you can sell something in Russia and and ship it. You not even exchange physical money. It's just all done instantaneous. Um, well, that's your expertise there. Yeah, I mean, I've sold guitars. I've sold guitars to Moscow, and I don't know if I can now. I mean, it's possible that we can't now. I don't know, but uh, um, you know, people need to remember the phone call that Trump had with Zelensky, the guy the CIA put in there. Yeah. That Trump said, "Hey, you need to investigate this." That was a like Trump said, it was a perfect phone call. He needed to investigate, but <laughs> but Zelensky's not on our side. He's he was put there by. No, he's a trans. He's a Jew. He's a trans pro pro transgender pro LGBT. All the big politicians have have got their hands in the pot in there, including the Bidens. They sure do. Millions of dollars. It's the most corrupt nation. And by the way, when Putin talks about denazifying the Ukraine, everybody laughs at that. And I, I know you know this, in my, back to referring to my book on Israel, the Holocaust. Yeah. Before you had the gas chambers, you had the Holocaust by bullets, they called it. She, when Barbarossa opened up uh, an attack on Stalin and the Germans came into Russia, uh, after the Ver Ver Vermont would conquer territory, then they'd move on to the next goal. And the uh, Eisengruppen deadhead anti-Jewish killers came in next, shooting Jews all over the Ukraine. I mean, all over Russia. That was the beginning. The Holocaust, the gas chambers came on the scene uh, to be a more merciful way for the killers to do the killing, not for the victims. These uh, Nazis are shooting women and children point blank range, losing their marbles. They finally start getting drunk doing it, and they're not killing them. They're wounding them, and they're coming out of the graves after they're covered up with dirt. In the middle of the night, they're crawling out, the ones that lived. Like zombies is crazy. But all that to say this, the very first major shooting in this Holocaust by bullet phase before the gas chamber phase, the largest killing of Jews in one day was in Kiev. You may know that. And uh, Bobby Yar, it's called. Mm. Two days back to back in giant ravines, Ukrainian nationalists, Ukrainian Nazis shot down 38,000, 37,000 Jews, mostly mm. women and children. Yeah. Those Nazis are still in power. Yeah. Now, we're going to move on to the October 7th thing with uh, the rest of the time we have. But let me say this. Uh, we know what's coming. The Ezekiel 38 war. Russia is the main person in that. But there's others. And isn't it interesting that just a couple of days ago from the time we're recording here, which will be a couple of weeks for you guys before this airs, but... Saudi Arabia, you probably heard this, the crown prince has, uh, has come after our country and is threatening to sell all their bonds and, and crash the, the market. It'd be unbelievable. If, if we steal the money that, that Russia has in, the, in, in our system, million, billions of dollars that our country has frozen, we're threatening to give that to the Ukraine. It's robbery. It's, it's exactly what robbery. And Saudi Arabia's taken their side. Of course, they're all, they're BRIC nations. They're together. So Saudi has taken a side against us and has joined Russia. What, where is this leading prophetically? The Ezekiel 38 war. Russia's going to eventually, you know, we're trying to break them. We're trying to, you know, deplete their money. And uh, we don't care about Ukraine. We don't care about them half million people. This is a tool to weaken Russia. Well, uh, we, we, cut, we blew up their pipeline. I mean, you, you can't tell me Russia blew up their own <laughs> pipeline. 
And uh, we did that. Russia, Putin's sitting there I was taking just, it. I was just in Germany two months ago and those on a plane talking to all these Europeans. They laugh at that, just like you said. Yeah. You know what's a very interesting... He's heading to the Golan Heights. Yeah. People don't know it. That is the mountains of the north. Well, a very, that's, a, that's where Ezekiel 38 takes place. A very place. interesting twist on that is this. Why does Russia invade Israel? Now, here's something interesting. And again, you, you can't predict anything. Every time you turn around, something bounces a new direction, doesn't it? From what you thought. But Putin, if you read his biography that came out in 2012, the major biography... Putin is, grew up being very pro-Jewish. Hmm. Give you quick illustrations. When he was little, a kid, his family was very poor. And there was a Jewish family down the block that fed them, literally, many times. When he went to high school, his wrestling coach, judo coach, was a Jew. He died the other day. Putin went to his funeral. They said he wept openly at his Jewish wow. soccer team, soccer coach, um, pardon me, judo wrestling coach. Putin's a high school German teacher was a Jewish woman. He loved her, older lady. She moves, she retires, she moves back to Israel. The first time Putin went to Israel, he looked her up. This is all a matter of record. Found her, bought her an apartment. So she mm. wouldn't have to live in a skid row. Bought her a very expensive apartment. There are, there are paintings of Putin in several museums in Jerusalem. The Jews loved Putin because of the way he treated them. And all of a sudden, during this Russia-Ukraine war, the Mossad stabs Putin in the back, and they're giving information to the Ukrainians and to the and to the um, and to uh, the Europeans about the Russians. He feels totally betrayed. Plus the gas that they found in, Ru in Israel. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, the pipeline's gone from Russia. Israel's going to take it over. And what if the you, what if the Antichrist is out of Europe, shows up? Okay. Well, Israel's going to somehow get into a pact with the Antichrist, isn't he? He's going to have oh, a yeah. covenant? Yeah. Well, what would Russia then do with Israel if Israel's allied with Russia, with, with Europe, with the Antichrist? Yeah. He's going to invade Israel. There's a, there's a basic Boy, there's, explanation for why the invasion will That's come. a lot of good stuff to think on right it's, there. It's, it's crazy. And Putin has already said that the Golan Heights belongs to Syria because Russia's in Syria. Yeah. And he's, he's setting us up. He's letting us There's know, so I'm coming things. for the goal tonight. The Hezbollah thing is going to be the big trigger. Potentially, we could come right up to the cusp of the rapture. If, if Israel invades Hezbollah, they don't have the resources. Well, they're strained on their own as it is with crazy little Gaza. You know Hezbollah's got 10 times the missiles, 10 times the strength. So that leads us them. right into the October 7th thing, which yeah. I think people, it's been almost a year now. Yeah. I don't think people realize... The world has changed since October 7th. Sure it has. Uh, America has changed. I mean, we're not really friends with Israel anymore. I mean, right. the people are, but the, the government. Right. Israel helping the Ukrainians is one thing, but after October the 7th and the bombardment of the Palestinians, now Israel's falling out of favor with whatever European currying they did for to helping the U Ukrainians out. So what do you make of the October 7th thing? Uh, I mean, some people say that it was... You know, Israel planned it. Uh, others say it's very spooky. It, it, I mean, you don't know what to believe, but and that's you do not know what to believe. You're totally right. But what we do see is what happened because of it. I have and that a, makes you wonder. I have a friend of mine. I have his picture in the Israel book. Pardon me. He was the Israeli version of the American sniper. I won't even mention his name on the broadcast, but he's a real estate salesman in Nashville, Tennessee tonight. <clears throat> and he and I are like father son. We've been in Israel together. He's a, he was a top sniper in the 80s in the Israeli Defense Force. Five days after October the 7th, I went and visited him in his home. And what he told me was the biggest problem Israel has now is they've uh, gone woke following the West, following America as an example. Yeah. All their toughest officers have been cashiered, ice cream cone people. And he's angry that, that they were caught off guard. He didn't get into any conspiracy theory. I could see he was very emotionally distraught. And he's no, he, he said his phone started ringing off the hook 10 minutes after that started. He said he called several Mossad officers that he knew and told them to resign. Resign. Leave the stage gracefully. He's angry. He said Netanyahu, he said the number one expression in Israel tonight is Netanyahu's going home. They're going to get rid of him overnight. But see, uh, one, one odd thing about that. 
The Bible says we're supposed to be pro-Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God's been wiping those people out since they crucified the Lord. We know that. Uh, someone said the greatest collection of anti-Semitic literature in the world is a King James Bible. God blasts them more than anybody else. God's got them stuck. They are, two-thirds of them are going to die in the tribulation yep. period. So he's not finished whipping them yet. One day they'll be reclaimed, but they're not there yet. And God's got them in this crazy problem in Hamas where to get those people out, there's that, there's that friendly fire and that uh, all those Palestinians being killed. Who knows how many of them they are? But that has caused the anti-Semitism to rise. God knew it. He allowed it. And now they're stuck one more time. All these college kids protesting. Well, if you were a lost college kid with a liberal you know, environment, what would you think about what you keep saying? So looking through a prophecy lens at what's happened, do you see the hand of God? Do you see this pointing, pushing oh, to something? Oh, yeah. Hezbollah brings the, you know, uh, 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 Israel attacks Hezbollah. Iran jumps in. Yeah. United States jumps in. Russia jumps in with Iran. Turkey tells uh, Greece, you can't let those Israeli jets land on Cyprus. <laughs> Greece tells them to go jump in the lake. Turkey calls its partner Pakistan with nuclear weapons. Hello. The Bible could be true, couldn't it? <laughs> couldn't it be true? Wars yeah. and rumors of wars? Yeah. We, we could be so close to the rapture now, and out we go, and then everything totally blows up. Doc and I both have given a lot of thought to this. I know we're out of time. We believe the Ezekiel 30, at least I do, and I think Doc agrees, we believe the Ezekiel 38 war ending and the rapture are the same day and the crowning of the Antichrist. They're going to burn the weapons for seven years. Is that a clue? That's not going to happen during the kingdom age. Those weapons can't be burning, and the Lord looks out the window and Jerusalem sees the smoke during the kingdom age. That ain't going to happen. That's interesting. So yeah. I, I think it all is the same day, and I think the Antichrist is used to end that and save the Jews, and he's crowned. In he other words, Ezekiel, comes in on a white Ezekiel horse. He's a hero. Ezekiel 38 can, ha can start before the rapture. Yep, before, during, or after. Yeah. Right I, there, I've same never, day. I've never heard many people talk about yep. that, but that's profound. Yeah. Well, Dr. Grady, thank you so much for all the work you've put in with writing the books. And I hope they buy it because it is helpful. Yep. It is not hard to read. It's very insightful. Your pastor will appreciate a copy. Your friends will appreciate a copy. The world doesn't promote our material. We have to have God's people take it. Yeah, and I really believe this this needs to be in your in your book library. This book you need you need it. And uh, boy, what a what a time we've had. These we've done three three complete shows. We're going to do some more on your Israel book, if the Lord tarries. If they don't get it for any other reason, here's my head in 1962 photograph from the New York Times. I won't even tell you what it's all about, but I'm nine years old right there. You'll get the book to find out. All right. Well, thanks for listening in, and uh, we'll see you next time. But until then, keep your eyes on them skies.